Hey everyone, if uh, you want to use the raise hand, if you've got a question for coach, we're going to go ahead and go start with Bob and Jesse. Yeah, Porter, Saturday, another great outing from the uh, bench. Uh, I want to talk more about Waldo, Latre. How different is this bench when they don't just rely on shooting threes? Huge. They both made, you know, the trade got, got himself going with a, uh, a dry body up finish nice to the basket. Um, you know, they both think about the free throws those two made, you know, and I don't know if you could tell on TV, but it was 13,000. You couldn't hear anything on those free throws and they both went up there and knocked down the free throws. So, you know, that was one of those things where, you know, do you give them an opportunity to, to make a three when you're tied uh, we fouled a little early, and that's the tricky part about it. It was 15 seconds left, and we talked about in the huddle. It's a little early to foul, but we said if it gets to six off the dribble, foul him. Don't wait till he's in a shooting motion. And we got him at 10, a little early. And with that, though, they, they never had a chance for a three to tie it with that. We made both free throws. Um, I think Waldo made the first two. They ran a nice little play. They scored again. We got it in, and then Latre made the two three throws. So you, that's that's that analytics thing. Do you do you, do you foul and not give them a chance? So, but with with that said, you got to make your free throws, and and those two made really clutch free throws. Appreciate it, Porter. Go ahead, Jesse. Uh, Porter just wanted to ask. I mean, last week it seemed like both games were were games you guys kind of fell down early and had to had to battle and 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 win those games. Maybe just what did you learn about the resiliency of this team? You know, to to kind of overcome a slow start and 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 how big is that moving forward as you go through conference play? Yeah, you, you know, it, you understand it's a forty minute game. You'd like to have great starts, but like. We got punched in our mouth at Kansas and then battled back. Sam got us going with an offensive rebound. It's just got to be gritty, man. It's it, The game's not won or lost in the first five minutes, but you got to, you know, you want to be able to handle the storm because, you know, some of these road venues just to start the game. But we got to take care of the ball to start the game better. I think that's something that we're focusing in on um, is really taking the ball better. Be strong with the ball. Um, what I loved about our group was um, the last 18 minutes we had one turnover. We out-rebounded them in that venue. We knocked on our shots, but we had one turnover the last 18 minutes. It's a big reason we won the game. Well, and just to just to follow that up, I mean, you guys won the rebounding battle, and Cincinnati had been really big rebounding all year. I think Jalen Moore had 10. Just how how big was that, and how, how important has Jalen become in terms of the, the overall rebounding effort for the team? Man, he can go get those in-traffic rebounds, those ones that maybe a smaller guard is trying to tip or gets over the back. He's rising above and grabbing them. So he he gives you those, him and Waldo. Both him and Waldo have been doing a great job. And the game before, Tega gave us 10. The game before, Tega gave us 10. So just getting our wings and everybody, guards, everybody, it's all hands on deck with defense rebounding. You can't just rely. Everybody's got to box out. This league sends so many guys to the glass. This league has so many good offensive rebounders. You got to box out, out to end, but then you got to release and you need guards rebounding down. Appreciate it, Porter. We'll go gearing then Joe. Porter, not to uh, take you too far from Norman, but I really could use some insight here on uh, on the a state of the game question. It's about court storming in, uh, in light of what happened yesterday with uh, Caitlin Clark and the Iowa women's game at, at Ohio State. And I think there was a men's uh, issue as well. Tulane in Memphis ended with uh, a fan, I think, uh, putting his hand on one of the Memphis players that, that could have turned really poorly had had the Memphis player reacted your thoughts on what is I know a, tr a tradition right for college sports but but has always seems to come up uh where you weigh tradition with safety and I'm, I'm wondering if you you'd care to comment on that so there's a, there's a couple of things with, with my comment on that one is I do think people got to pre be prepared I'll tell you this we get to Cincinnati Cincinnati had a court storming against TCU literally an hour and a half before the game security pulled me aside and said if Cincinnati wins and they run the court, this is what's going to happen. We were coming out of the one exit. He goes, you're going to shake their hands and we got a whole tunnel for you to go right to a door behind their bed. So they were completely prepared. They had security there and there. So I think the preparation is part of it Two, There's got to be some kind of penalty if there's contact with the student athlete or if that it's like the, like, I mean, whether it's an arrest, it's hard because we court stormed, when we played Alabama. It was great. 
But yeah. you, you don't want, there's got to be sanctions if there's a crossing the line of touching a, a student athlete or something thrown at a student athlete. They got to feel safe down there. But, but it's, 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 it's preparation. And then it's got to be an education about to your fans about don't cross the line, man. Don't cross the line. If you're going to storm the court, run to, if it's, it's, it's in the middle, the middle, but you got to, your first, your first responsibility is to get the other team off safely. And I think we've got to continue to work on that. So you'd like to see it preserved if done, if done correctly. You don't, you don't want this to, to, to equal an automatic, let's not do this anymore. I'll be honest with you. I've been on such a, I, I followed, I saw what happened to Caitlin. Uh, right. Man, it was terrible. It was, I, I saw it. Right. I've seen what's happened. Uh, I saw Purdue at, at Nebraska. I was, I was listening to paint um, talk about it. So I, I'll be honest with you. I've been so entrenched with Texas. Sure. I haven't right. thought about it. So um, I, I really don't even know. I just, I just know just happened with me. They were completely prepared. They were like, here you go. You're going through here. Yeah. And the, 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 they were on completely on top of it, um, of, of where we were going to go. Um you just, I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a fine line because it's been something in basketball for a long time. I just, um, I, I never, I'm going to think about that, whether I just yeah. think they should totally eliminate it or not. I got I got to think about that. I got you. I appreciate it, Porter. Thanks. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. Hey, Porter. I was reading some, some old quotes that when, when you were an assistant at A&M in the late nineties, Rodney Terry was at Baylor that you guys crossed paths on, um, the recruiting trail and got to know each other a little bit back then. I was wondering if you could share sort of any of those stories or or what you knew of Rodney back then. You know, one thing I love about Rodney is Rodney is the same guy. He's the same guy 30 years later. He's the same guy as he was at UTEP. He is, he is, he's the same guy as he was an assistant at North Carolina Wilmington as he is the head coach of Texas. You know, we've, we've known each other probably, shoot, since mid-90s, 30, you know, 30 years. Um, and, uh, you know, I've always thought we, we both were assistants hustling, trying to recruit some of the same players. Um, then I know he was at Williamington with coach Wainwright, and, um, just been someone who I've, we've, I, I love, really respect his energy, who he is as, as a man, his personality. Um, he's always been an extremely hard worker and I love guys that get shots and takes, you know, he, he surpassed everybody. The expectations of in a hard situation last year, and he got his got the chance well deserved. So, from a guy that I've known thirty years, he hasn't changed. He's always been a hard working, hustling, you know, recruiter, hustling coach with with great personality. It's always been the same. Do you happen to remember any of those players you were going after against each other back then? Oh man, I'd love to tell the stories of the ones that I got and he didn't, um, <laughs> but. Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to think about that. I mean, there was a lot of players we went back back then. I'm just trying to think. I know some of the guys we he got and I got. I mean, then he was at Wilmington. And we, you know, what the other thing we do is we'd always respect each other's evaluation. He was a guy we'd call and be like, "Hey, did you see this kid? What'd you think of this kid?" And you know, just compare evaluations because he's someone that I always respected with his evaluation. Thanks. We'll go James then Eli. Hey, Porter, I, I'm curious, you know, I, I, I love J.B. On's patience in the game uh, against Cincinnati because they were jumping out and double teaming him and he was finding things and he ended up having a really good game. Your thoughts on how he and Milos are kind of handling some of those things as teams play games with you trying to get the ball out of your guard's hands. Well, I think they've both, you know, they understand that having each other is a positive. You know, that's, that's, I mean, they, that it's not all the pressure on one guy handling it. Both of them guys are really good passers on the ball screens. Both those guys can handle it and go downhill and create. So to have multiple guys that can do that, that that's a huge, huge for him. And I thought Javion, every game in the Big 12, he's getting more and more acclimated to the physicality. Um, what I loved is we, Day Day was, we would talk so much about he had back to back games at 19. And Javion was, that was one of the first things he looked at that we held him to eight. And, uh, I know that was big for for our guys because he was really doing well day day two back to back nineteen. I think JV and we were excited that we had one turnover the last eighteen minutes, you know, in a hostile environment with arguably some of the best guard defensive pressure in the league. I mean, Cincinnati puts extreme pressure on the ball, and uh, to have one turnover the last eighteen minutes, and hopefully we can continue to build that. Obviously, we all need to take care of the ball better, and uh, but they saw how that directly re re related to getting a win is one turnover last 18 minutes on the road, extreme pressure. So the, the biggest thing is, man, 
They got each other. They got two guys that can really handle it. You watched them against the press down the stretch. They both made big plays. They have two guys that were able to make great passes and get out of the press because they tried to press four times or five times down the stretch, and we had zero turnovers. So it's really helpful when you get two guys like that. Go ahead, Eli. Porter, I, I take it between the two wins last week, Texas getting their win, everything is broken right for it to be pretty packed tomorrow night at LNC. What are you expecting in terms of that crowd? You know what? I, the students been great. We've, you know, they, they, man, did they come out against West Virginia their first time back? Uh, we keep setting student crowds. They told me that the top 10 student crowds, top 10 student crowds of all time here, eight of them are the last two years. So want to hopefully I think the students are going to come out and uh, just hope more people, you know, we know we got to face every night out in this league on the road. Um, the people that come in this building have been great. And I just more the better, man, strength in numbers. So uh, I hope this thing is, is packed to the, to the roof. And so my follow to that, you mentioned kind of what you see out on the road and the next time you guys play Texas and Norman, it'll be an SEC game. You'll be playing in the SEC how much does the context matter of, of a new landscape of there will be different teams that pack their places as you're trying to build what you're trying to build? I know attendance is important to you. Is it about running your own race or is it about the league that you're in where, where you're seeing what, what's around every night? Yeah, Eli, to be completely honest with you, I, 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 my feet are right here. I haven't even thought about the context of playing Texas in the future. Um, I haven't even, that's just completely honest. I might, my, we said it all year long. Our feet is here in the big 12 and this year, right now we're in the best league in the country. I mean, it's just crazy. And, uh, our thoughts are about Texas this year, this game tomorrow, what their team is. Cause shoot, I mean, even from last year to this year's Texas, both of our teams look different. I mean, both of our teams look a lot different. So it's, it is year to year. And what you do is just got to, where got to be great where your feet are. Our feet are right now. We're in the middle of an unbelievable big 12 race where everybody can beat everybody every night. And we got the Longhorns coming to town tomorrow night. A tremendous amount of respect. They had a huge win. They looked phenomenal against Baylor. So that's what we got coming up tomorrow night. Appreciate it, Porter. You got it, Eli. We'll go clip then, Chris. Yeah. Uh, coach, hang on. Okay. Can you hear me? Barely. Okay. You got me? Yeah, I got you. All right. Uh, Coach, it's, uh, everybody's getting people out of the transfer portal, but very few of these teams are having the kind of success you're having. Aside from talent, this is kind of a general question, but what would you say is the primary reason you're being successful aside from talent that's making this work this season so quickly? Cliff, I'll tell you, I think the Big 12 has done as good a job in the portal as anybody in the country. Look at the success Texas Tech's had in the portal. Look at the success Iowa State's had in the portal. Kansas State. Tremendous help in the portal. You know, look at Texas. Max Abrams is arguably, I mean, one of the best players in the country. I mean, I think this league, look, Kansas, Hunter Dickinson. I mean, it's, I mean, Baylor, I'm going to keep going down. I'm going to keep going down to every single team and I'm going to name you three or four guys. I think this whole league has done a great job of evaluating and getting pieces that fit who they are, fit what they're doing. And I don't know if I, a league top to bottom, you can, I mean, tremendous success in this league with portal guys, older, physical fits what their program is doing. And that's Cliff what I'd say about us. Our guys fit. I mean, JV we really want needed speed shooting at that guard spot. You know, we needed some older big wings that could defend physically against higher level athletes. Rivaldo Soares, Latre Darthard, John gives us a big physical presence. So we, we did well in the portal of getting needs we had. And I don't think you can go look farther than the big 12 to find a league that has done the same. Tremendous success from every program on getting portal pieces that fit. Yeah, really quick one uh, to follow. Um, I don't know if you saw Caitlin Clark in the court storming. I know you guys had a court storming yeah, uh, last year against Alabama. Do you ever worry about safety in those situations? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you know, you, your administration, you hope that they're all completely on it. Um, you know, whether you're on the road, and I, I said earlier, that Cincinnati, we watched on tape, they had a court storm against TCU. So we knew what they did. You know, we knew a court storm. But right when we got there, it was an hour and a half before the game. Boom, security came to me and they told me exactly the game plan that was going to happen. This is where you're going. If, if Cincinnati wins, you're going out this door right here. You can have all these security right here if they win. They're, and, and like sh blocking them from the student court storming. So 100%, you need everybody, everybody. Safety's first. 
safety's first. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that 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 Caitlin could be running off and someone could could T-bone her uh, right there. And uh, no, safety's first. And you absolutely you worry about it. Coach, how do you feel like your team has responded this season to the challenges you give them based on game plans, so like rebounding against Cincinnati? And then what would that focus be for this Texas team? Thought they really responded. I mean, we came back from a week where we lost two tough ones on the road, TCU, Kansas, got punched in the mouth. And then we knew we had to get a very physical West Virginia team and out rebound them. And then we had to go on the road to Cincinnati. So rebounding from those two games, we lost two, we've come back. So I love how our guys have fought back and not get too down off two loss, tough losses. Cause you're going to have them in this league. I mean, you're going to have them. And uh, so, you know, how that relates to this game, we've got it, you know, I wanted them, I, t I said this on the radio this morning, you know, it's a fine line. You know, we're playing Saturday. We got to come back from Cincinnati, turn around and game plan Sunday, Monday to play tomorrow. So but what I don't want to happen is sometimes it happens with adults coaching. And sometimes it happens with kids with the pressure with social media, because don't think they don't know how many people are hitting them on social media, positive or negative. And what I don't want to happen is, is it to become relief rather than joy for them, because that happens with coaches. Any coach will tell you, sometimes it's just relief rather than joy. And I, I love the guys were excited in the locker room after the game. I wanted them to feel that joy. I told them after the game, the grind, the prep, all that, that's the fun is right here, investing in that. And I want them to have that joy. And we had to turn right around and not get too high. Yesterday had, had to be all about Texas. We got a tremendous respect. They got unbelievable backcourt in Max and Tyrese. You know, Tyrese, I mean, what a game he had against Baylor. Um, and then I, I think they got one of the more difficult centers in the country to guard. Um, he's the three level scorer. He can score on the block. He can score from three. And then he's got a nice shot fake and he can put it on the deck and get to the rim. I think they got a phenomenal first round draft pick type athlete in Dylan Mitchell, who could, who's finding a way to get double figures through cutting, rebounding, transition. Um, Brock Cuttingham's one of the best glue guys. So you've, you know, you've got to be on top of, Put that in the bank and be on top of your next prep because they're every game you better be ready. We'll go to Ryan and Gracie to close it out. Hey Porter, you talked about Max a couple times. What about his skill set has made kind of his transition from or you up to Texas life in the Big Twelve night tonight? So it looks pretty seamless as far as just dropping him in and continue to be an explosive scorer. Seamless. I mean he. You don't get that many points. I don't care what level of you, if you don't know how to put that ball in the hole and see it go in the hole. Tremendous confidence. Watch him at the end of games. You know, you can go back to Louisville, um, to even West Virginia. They lost that, but he had like 12 in like two and a half minutes. Um, obviously, at, at uh, Cincinnati, we just saw that one that he did. Um, and then Tyrese had the one at last thing. So they got a lot of threats. But Max has just got so much confidence, plays with a great pace. Um he can get his shots off at any level. He's he's done it and uh, seamless, um, you know, moving to the Big 12. He's, he's one of our premier guards in our league. Gracie, with the final question. Hey, Porter. So I'm sure that you've seen, like, Coach Terry's response to the horns down after their loss against UCF. Unlike the court storming, this really doesn't have, like, a safety issue. Do you feel like that's just part of the college atmosphere? Or have you said in, anything to your players about that kind of thing heading into the game? Yeah, Gracie, I, I knew I was going to get asked this sometime today. And it's my last question through four interviews. So it is, I was surprised it didn't happen earlier. So, um, you know, I, I really going to kind of just stay out of it. I heard some comments. I heard Coach Sampson talk about it's in the the Texas fight song that, oh, you sucks. I heard that in the, in the, um, in Coach Sampson's comments. So I, it's definitely a part of it. And we felt it there last year. When we played, holy cow, did we ever feel it um, there? Uh, I know that lyric is only in, I did a little research. It's only in when we play Texas. They alter the, 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 that lyric um, when you play te the OU uh, Texas game. So, um, you know, I, I don't really want to get dragged into it. I know for us, um, we're excited about this game tomorrow, but uh, I know it's a part of it on both fan bases. So let's just, let's just not let's just say what it is. I mean, they get it here. We get it there. I've been at the Red River rivalry where it's half and half and walking around the fairgrounds. I mean, it's both sides are giving it to each other. So you just hopefully what you just hope for is it stays safe, that it stays, you know, that uh, a, a great rivalry. 
you know, and no one crosses the line in that grave rivalry. That's what you hope for. You know, you don't want to put, you know, everybody sit there and like this in the rivalry. It's, it's awesome. I've, I've been at Red River the last couple of years, man. It's awesome. I've been there in their, their new arena last year. Awesome. All right. So both fan bases, passionate. We're going to give it to each other. Just not crossing each other's lines.